Tyler Dunn. He wrote a great article today um, on his Substack about the cow. Or it's on, is it on Yahoo? No, I thought uh, I was, I'm almost positive it was on the Substack. Go long Substack, TD. Okay. Yeah. So Yahoo probably just uh, summarized it. But yeah, his Substack. And he talked about basically how Mike McCarthy is kind of fed up with Jerry Jones. Uh, I'll read you a little bit uh, from one of the quotes from the story. It's Go Long's Tyler Dunn. This is from an ex-Cowboys personnel man, so somebody that worked in their front office. And he says this about Mike McCarthy and how he's handling Jerry Jones. He's doing it the best he can. Some of the people I've talked to have said that he's getting fed up with it a little bit. It's hard. I feel bad for Dak. I think Dak's a really good quarterback who is, compa- who is capable of taking a team to the Super Bowl. He's got to overcome a lot of things. Here's one more thing from Dunn, the article. It's not a direct quote from a person, but from the article. Multiple people high up in the organization indicate that current players are more concerned about Jerry Jones than their own head coach. They know ownership can undermine the head coach at any moment. So that means you can get a talented team like they've had. This is a quote from a personnel source. uh, The same one as before. But they're going to underachieve when the coaches can't influence the players the way they need to. All right, um, Martin. You are a frequent listener of the Odd Couple. You also see me on First Things First. So you will not be surprised when I say, I told you so! This is what I have been saying about the Dallas Cowboys and Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones, since he ran Jimmy Johnson out of the building. I know he won another championship 29 years ago with Barry Switzer as his coach with Jimmy's players. But since then, and since Jerry Jones has really taken over the football operations of the franchise, he has created a culture that is not conducive to winning big. You can have a good team. You can have a lot of talent. But that team and that talent will underachieve and not win it all because Jerry Jones has made the Dallas Cowboys a soap opera. They are a drama. I've said it before. I've said it again. They are not primarily a football franchise. They are a drama, a sideshow, a circus that is in a football setting. It's like Bull Durham or Love and Basketball. Those were great dramatic movies. It really wasn't about basketball or baseball for the most part. Some, yes. But the story was the drama, the love stories, things like that. And it just happened to take place in a basketball or baseball setting. That's the Dallas Cowboys. That's the Dallas Cowboys, and that's look. They got they now their roster isn't as good as it's been, but they've had a very good roster, and they've constantly underachieved because Jerry Jones has created a bad culture. He's got Mike McCarthy. He's got his first year defensive coordinator Mike Zimmer, and he's got his quarterback on lame duck contracts because he's created a circus atmosphere that makes money. That makes headlines. That will be talked about ad nauseum on television and radio. But when it comes to the main thing, which is winning championships, he falls woefully short. And Mike McCarthy now has to deal with it. And that's a problem. Chris, you said I wasn't surprised. That's not true. 
It was predictable. It was anticipated. It was understandable. Just tried to uh, steal your bit from TV. <laughs> no, but the fact of the matter Not, is, you didn't do it right. But that's well, it's because it's, it's, the it was misdirection in the, was misdirected. It was in the negative. That, that was the problem. If you guys said I wasn't was surprised that I would have been able to do it. anyway. Not to belabor the point. The fact of the matter is, I think Mike McCarthy has done his job. I mean, in the last three years, they have 36 regular season wins. You know what that's good for? The playoffs. Right. Either won the division or came in the wild card last three years. He's been successful as far as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys is concerned. Like, when you look at that roster, and you said the roster is not as good as it was last year, and I agree with you, but even last year, they were lacking at the linebacker position, and I – and like a fool, chose to just ignore it the entire time. And sure enough, once you get to the biggest games, like the playoffs, the first round, second rounds, you know, conference championships, so on, your, whatever your biggest Achilles heel is will almost always come to light. And sure enough, that lack of linebacker core let Aaron Jones run for like 8,000 trillion yards in that playoff game, and they didn't stand a shot. I don't know what Mike McCarthy's supposed to do in that. He was supposed to go line up, wear 57, and go make tackles. It's not happening, right? I think when you look, and then people want to blame Dak or so on and so forth, but I think if you have the hand of the Mendoza line of, can I win with this quarterback, Dak Prescott is above that Mendoza line. Like, Dak yes. Prescott is – he is – guy you with can win with. With all his flaws. With, yes. yes, even still. Like, if you just binary, zero or one, one, can I win, he's a one. So, when I look at this – I look at, okay, this roster not only needs to improve, but also why is it that we're talking about Dak Prescott being the first $60 million quarterback? Because he didn't get extended a few years ago. Why is it that we're talking about C.D. Lamb after all these other wide receivers, you name them, Je Justin Jefferson, so on and so forth, have already set the reset the market why not get a deal done with CD Lamb before that? So you're not even so so CD's not even coming in talking about 35 million a year like Justin Jefferson has got to take down. That's on ownership. That's on your general manager. That's not on the coach. That's not the coach's job to do that. That's on they, they So not, you you seem like you don't think it's a culture problem as much as just they haven't had good enough players. I think the, the they both are true. Right, they both are true because a your culture. Jerry always sticks with the guys he drafts a little too long. Leighton Van Der Esch, right? He'll stick with those guys. And why does he do that? Because of the culture that is already established. Like, well, these are my guys. We can coach them up. These are my guys. We can coach them up. Instead of going out there on the free agent market or going out there and making trades, right? Why? Like, why is it that we still are seeing guys like Ezekiel Elliott walk back into Dallas because they know him? And I, don't give me, that's how America works. When you know somebody, it's a little bit well, easier to it, get yeah, plugged in. in sports, it, it'll, it'll hurt you when exactly. you do stuff like that because sports, unlike corporate America, is about production and everybody sees it. Well, you not know? only and that. I'm not saying corporate America is not about production, but you can hide. Every job in corporate America isn't about production. Well, and right? You can hide in corporate America. You can't hide in professional football, baseball, or basketball. Because well, the any difference sport. is there's very rarely people's job it is to try to take you down, right? Like your success ultimately means in professional sports, your success means that whoever you beat is failing. Right, it's a, it's a, it's very cut and dry, right? Right. Sports has a short menu, wins and losses, right? No, so after a yeah. while, <laughs> after a while, <laughs> if you are successful, that means everybody else around you is failing, right? So there's gonna be some losses that you take on that, but if you're not evaluating what is happening, evaluating what is going on, and the one through line, like my dad told me when I was dating, the one through line between all your relationships is you. Right, you're the only one that's dated all these different girls that can point to what has gone wrong in these right. different scenarios. It's you. It's always going to be you. So with the Cowboys at this point, I think that they were a roster that was Super Bowl potential last year. This year, I don't think so. Well, they, no, not right but now. You are in the spot now 
where you're going to have to pay these guys more than you would have to because of the relationships, because because Dak and, and you know it's kind of reported that Jerry and Dak don't have like the quote unquote father son relationship that he likes to have with some of his players, which I kind of think is a funny way to do business because you don't fire your kids. Right, you always well, keep them. They they wait too long and overpay and guys. I, they could have paid. I, they could have handled all of these contracts last right. season and then be in a position where you have a decent amount of salary cap because everybody's figured out you have some salary cap to go out and get some guys. You have some, but now because you don't, you're going to end up paying what is it, twenty five percent of your cap to three different people. And so that, well, we'll that's see bad if business. they do if if they end up doing that. But we will get more into this. Cowboys culture, and I'm going to share some specific things I'm talking about because everybody might not understand what I mean when I say culture. Some people, Martin, may say, well, what? he's the owner. He's not putting on pads. He's not calling plays. What do you mean, Chris? I'm going to let you know what I mean. Jerry Jones has created a culture that is not conducive to winning big because it is not, in my view, primarily a football franchise. It is primarily a an entertainment franchise business that happens to be in a football environment. And here's some of the things I I mean by that, Martin, and what I will use to support my argument. Uh, number one, Jerry Jones is, it's like, remember the, the, the famous Suge Knight quote about P. Diddy? all up in the videos and dancing and all that. That's Jerry Jones. Sure. I came to see the MC. I didn't come to see P. Diddy dancing all up in the videos. I came to see Dak. I came to see and hear from Mike McCarthy. Why is Jerry Jones talking after every single game right outside the locker room? Why? I don't need to hear from him. I need to hear from the coach and the players. It's great for the media and for the fans. It's great for business. But it's not good for football. All right? And and he's on, every week he's on a radio show in Dallas that makes noise. And we talk about his quotes on the show. What other owner, Martin, is doing that? Clark Hunt, winner of three of the last few Super Bowls, the Kansas City Chiefs. We, we never see Clark Hunt until he's holding the trophy at the end of the Super Bowl. No, nope, Robert that's it. Kraft, we never used to hear from him occasionally, but not like anything remotely close to Jerry Jones. If we heard about Robert Kraft, it was he's helping Meek Mill, Meek <laughs> Mill get out of jail, or you know, like it really, it was something constructive outside of football. Right. And then we see him holding the trophy. In the NBA, Wick Grossbeck, you didn't see him until he was holding that trophy last week. He could have walked in here right now. I'd have introduced myself. Thank you. Josh Kroenke, the last NBA champion before Boston. Stan. Denver Nuggets. Well, Stan, Josh is his son. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you. Gotcha. And, and nobody knows those guys. You read about them in the paper occasionally when they're trying to get a stadium built or something like that. There is no other owner in sports that is out there talking like he's the head coach. And that's that right there undermines the authority of your head coach. And you, as a head coach, the one thing you absolutely positively need is the authority. So your players know that when you speak, you mean business. They know that they shouldn't cross you. But when they know they can go around your back, talk to the owner and all that, then that undermines your authority. You know this, Martin, in Miami, LeBron's first year. A lot of the players wanted Eric Spolster out of there. Yep. They went around into Pat Riley. He said, look, Spolster's not going anywhere. If you're going to win a championship, which I know y'all want to do, which I know, LeBron, you need to do, it's going to be with him. And imagine how different things would have been had Pat Riley interjected. Had yes. Pat Riley intervened. You right? know what? You're right. Yes, yeah, Spo. You know, he, okay, I'll talk to him. He can do things. No, it would have been a mess. And then I'll throw this out there just lastly before you go, Martin. Demarcus Lawrence, right? You remember this. When he was asked sure. after they lost to the young Green Bay Packers at home where they had won, what, 
16 straight games, 15 straight games, something like that. He was asked what happened. He said, we were burnt out. Burnt out? Now, he did say it was physical. It wasn't physical in my view. How can you be burnt? Are you a professional football player or not? You were the only team that was <laughs> burnt out? What are you talking about? I believe it was emotional burnout from the circus, from the expectations every year, Super Bowl, Jerry Jones running off at the mouth talking about the Super Bowl. The, they were emotionally burnt out because every single week it's a huge story. Well, and you get that wears you down mentally and emotionally. But the and thing I think is, that's Chris, one of the Cowboys' problems. The thing is, it's a huge story for almost every team that has Super Bowl, re- realistic Super Bowl as- a- expectations, right? If you look at the Super Bowl odds, the top three or four teams, you'll look at, you know, like the Patriots under Robert Kraft, where they had, were well, really, but it was under Belichick and Brady. Now the Kansas City Chiefs, where it's under Randy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. There is a clear delineation of who is in charge, right? Yeah. There is a clear delineation of who has the final say. Now, we know ultimately the owner has the ultimate final say when it comes to most of these types of things, but we're not hearing the owner every week about his final say, right? That's the difference between knowing the owner has all the power and then also like, but but what, what those other guys do, it, what the way that they move, they empower their head coaches to make unilateral decisions. Thank you. And then if they make too many wrong unilateral decisions, they will make a difference. There you go.